dear students this module deals about the smoking of foods and other methods of smoking smoking of foods was started by the ancient cavemen the huts or the caves used in those ancient days lacked an exhaust chimneys and their adobes soon became very smoky the meats were hanged to dry but soon it was identified that meat stored in smoky areas acquired a peculiar flavor and was also preserved for a longer period that the meat is simply dried thus smoking came into routine practice and slowly entered into modern cuisines on completion of this module you will be able to identify the methods of smoking of food products and also to understand the steps involved in the smoking of foods and different types of smokers smoking is one of the ancient preservation method used to preserve cured meat and fish by using the products of smoke this process also increases the palatability by adding flavor and color to the smoked product the drying action of the smoke tends to preserve the meat through the chemicals present in the smoke wood or also acts as a natural preservative as well though the cheeses vegetables beer ingredients were smoked the most commonly smoked products are meat and fish smoking is considered as a complementary process to curing smoking was used to preserve meat by absorption of aromatics from the smoke certain components of smoke acts as a powerful preservative of meat the smoked meat are less susceptible to rancidity and mold growth smoked meat and poultry are widely accepted for their peculiar smoky flavor than for their preservation effect now we'll discuss about the types of smoking first is the cold smoking cold smoking is an old process in which the smoke is passed through pipes to the meat which is kept in a separate chamber the smoke gets cooled while passing through the pipe before it reaches the meat during this type of smoking the meat is kept very close to the room temperature hence it takes a longer duration as per fda the product is not cooked during cold smoking and also the temperature of air around the food product is kept well below 30 degree c this represents that food is in temperature danger zone where microbial growth may occur hence the product which are salted cured and fermented are cold smoked salting or curing of meat ensures that bacteria will not develop while it is smoked and stored the more intense smoke flavor in meat indicates that they are left longer in the smoker as the cold smoked meats are not cooked they tend to have a smooth texture which often reminds the texture of uncooked food product this type of smoking does not preserve the food product and should be refrigerated till consumption it is highly recommended to cook the cold smoked meat product before consumption cold smoking is effectively carried out in the winter season because during hot season the temperature inside the smoker may rise high the second method is hot smoking hot smoking is a process in which the meat product is enclosed in a smoker and directly exposed to smoke from wood this process involves heating and high temperature of the product hot smoked product does not need any further cooking the temperature of the hot smoked product ranged from 52 to 80 degrees celsius for hot smoking modern electric cleans are used in which the meat is cooked and smoked at the same time over a burning fire or electric elements of the clean it takes only short period of time to smoke the product the third method is called smoke roasting it is a combination of smoking and roasting this method is also referred as barbecuing or pit baking it is done in a closed wood fired masonry oven or barbecue pit 
where the temperature of the product is reached above 121 degrees Celsius. This type of roasting can be performed in any conventional oven by keeping a pan filled with smoke. This type of smoking should be carried out in a well ventilated area to prevent carbon monoxide poisoning. The fourth method is pan smoking. It is a simple smoking method when smoker or smoke house is not available. It is an inexpensive method which imparts a smoky flavor to foods in a very short duration. This process requires two disposable aluminium pans, a rack and a sawdust. The drawback of this process is that the smoke cannot be controlled and sometimes the products tend to get very intense smoke flavor which results in a bitter taste. The last method uses liquid smoke. Liquid smoke is obtained by controlled burning of wooden chips in the combustion chamber which produces the smoke. It is then passed through a tube from a combustion chamber to a condenser. In the condenser, the smoke cools and condenses to form a liquid. The liquid smoke is collected, filtered to remove the impurities and then bottled. This method of distillation produces wide of smoke flavors. Currently, liquid smoke has been used in many commercial operations to add smoke flavor to the food products. Liquid smoke has advantages over traditional smoking is that it can be controlled and immediate smoke flavor is attained. Let us see how to select the wood for smoking. The heavier hardwoods like oak, hickory, are used for smoking heavier meats like beef and pork, whereas lighter hardwoods like alder, maple, fruit and nut bearing woods are used for smoking lighter meats like poultry and fish. The soft woods like pines, cedar are not preferred for smoking meat as they burn fast and produce significant quantities of resin on burning. They also impart undesirable taste to the food. Burning of fresh cut hardwood produces lot of steam and off flavor during combustion due to high moisture of about 50% by weight. Such woods will take up 45% more energy than charcoal or gas. Hence for this reason dried hardwoods are preferred for smoking of foods. Dried hardwood has a moisture around 5% and the remaining 95% constitute the following components such as 40% of cellulose, 40% of hemicellulose, 19% of lignin and 1% of minerals. Also the moisture content will vary depending on the wood variety, age, soil and climate. The production of characteristic smoke flavor depends on the type of wood used for smoking. The smoke flavor chart shows that various types of wood sources and its characteristics and its suitability to different food products. Here you need to know about the wood smoke. Wood smoke is an aerosol produced by pyrolysis of wood at elevated temperature and reduced oxygen. It is a combination of tiny particles mixed with water vapor and a complex cocktail of gases. The sole fuel source in smoking of woods is the dried hardwoods. The hardwoods consisted of cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin in which the cellulose and hemicellulose are the important structural material of wood cells. On burning wood, cellulose and hemicellulose caramelize and produce carbonyls. Lignin, a complex arrangement of interlocked phenolic molecules is the cell bonding substance present in wood cells. When burnt, lignin also produces a number of characteristic aroma components. The minor amount of proteins in wood contributes to the roasted flavors. As these phenolic components in smoke are unstable, they dissipate after a few weeks or months from the product. In regard to the composition of smoke, wood smoke is composed of gas, particles of liquid droplets and solids. 
There are over 400 components were identified in different sources of wood smoke. Until now, 131 carbonyl, 75 phenols, 46 furans, 40 acids, 16 lactones, 22 esters and alcohols were recognized. Thus, the composition of wood smoke depends on the type of wood, temperature and humidity of smoking, oxygen availability and moisture content of the wood. The carbonyls produced during burning are responsible for the color components and sweet and fruity aromas. The burning of lignin in wood produce pungent smoky flavor components such as goicol, phenol, syringol. These also provide a sweeter scent such as vanilla scented vanillin and clove like iso eugenol. Goicol is the main phenolic component contributes to the smoky taste whereas syringol is the primary contributor to smoky aroma. We will now focus on the functional properties of smoke. The functional properties of smoke components are flavor, color and antimicrobial activity. The peculiar smoky flavor is due to the presence of phenolic components. The blend of carbonyls and acids contributes to the flavor of smoke. Some of the phenolic components in smoke are similar to that present in spices. An example is eugenol in cinnamon, pepper, nutmeg, marjoram and cloves. The flavor of smoke components also depends upon the concentration. At high concentration, it provides sensory responses of burnt and pungent taste, whereas at desired concentration, it produces sweet and smoky taste. Wood smoke also acts as a colorant. A significant color is formed in the product when smoke and food components react chemically at elevated temperature. The presence of acids and phenols are responsible for the coloring ability of wood smoke. While color formed during the heating of meat was mainly due to acids and carbonyl components. When the product is heated, the carbonyl components react with the protein in a mylar reaction to produce the brown color. The wood smoke also enables the formation of crust on meat. Among the functional components of smoke, phenols, acids and carbonyls are found to have antimicrobial activity. Carbonyls and acids have a wide spectrum of antibacterial activity even at low level of phenols. Few studies on antimicrobial properties of 0.5% smoke preparation was found to be bactericidal to pathogens such as E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus and Listeria monocytogens. Thus, smoking acts as a preservative agent. Regarding the type of smokers, they are available in different sizes and shapes with a variety of heating sources. Now, we will discuss about few of the commercially available smokers. The first is the vertical smoker or charcoal smoker. Vertical smoker is the most commonly used type due to its compact size, cost and ease of operation. It consists of two bowls, one is to place the charcoal and smoker wood and other bowl holds water or other liquid to keep the product moisturized throughout the process. The front door of the smoker is to feed in new charcoal and wood. The product to be smoked is stored in the rack at the top. Hooks also provided at the top can be used to hang the meat. The heat will rise straight from the bottom bowl to the top. Next type is the offset smoker. The offset smoker consisted of a cylindrical cooking chamber attached with a firebox through a connecting pipe. Fire is lit in the firebox and airflow is tightly controlled. Apart from the vent in the cooking chamber, sometimes the firebox is also provided with the vent to regulate the temperature. The heat and smoke from the fire is moved through the connecting pipe into the cooking chamber and it flavors the meat. The excess smoke is vent through the exhaust pipe of the cooking chamber. This can be used as a normal grill and also to smoke meat products. The third type is propane smoker. A propane smoker is used for smoking of wheat, 
in a controlled atmo atmosphere. In a propane smoker, the heat is generated by a gas burner directly under a steel or iron box containing the wood or charcoal which provides the smoke. Few vent holes on the top of the box also provided on the steel box. It smokes instead of burning due to less oxygen. Desired combination of wood and charcoal can be used and also this method consumes less wood. The next method is pellet smoker. The pellet smoker or pellet grill consists of a pellet bin filled with the wooden pellets. Wooden pellets are natural hardwood sawdust compacted and extruded into small round size pieces. An auger is turned by a variable low speed motor which draws the pellet from the hopper into the internal fire chamber where the pellets are burnt and produces heat and smoke. Heat and smoke diffuse into the product by a continuously running blower fan. The auger speed can also be adjusted manually. The smoking of foods are advantageous because it adds flavor and taste to foods, it imparts pleasing color to food product, it prevents fat from rancidity, it extends the shelf life of the product, it also kills certain bacteria and slows down the growth of other microbes. Though smoking has few advantages, there are few limitations also. Wood smoke possesses antimicrobial and antioxidant activity, but smoke alone is not sufficient for preserving food. It needs to be combined with other preservation methods like salting, curing or drying. Smoking protects the most vulnerable exterior surface of food by giving an extra protection, whereas the other preservation methods protect the interior of the foods from microbial spoilage. There are chances for the food product to get dried due to long duration of smoking. The added problem faced during smoking of food is that the smoke component stick to the external surface of food and does not penetrate deep into the product. In modern cuisines, smoking is chiefly carried out for its characteristic flavor. Though artificial smoke flavoring is available in form of liquid smoke, it mimics the flavor of smoking but not its preservative qualities. Now we will consider few products that are commonly smoked to enhance the taste and flavor of foods. First we will see about smoked meats. Smoked turkey, smoked chicken, beef and pork or flavorful options for preparing tastier meats. Smoking imparts a significant flavor and increases the shelf life of meats. To get a delicate flavor of poultry meat, they are processed with light smoke. Addition of spices, seasonings and condiments also improves the flavors. Smoked meat is a method of preparing red meat. It is done to preserve the protein rich foods which would otherwise spoil quickly. Dehydration, antibacterial properties of phenols and other chemicals in the absorbed smoke preserves the product for a longer period. Smoked and cured sausages do not require refrigeration and further cooking before consumption. The flavor of smoked meats make them delicacy in many cuisines. Next is smoked fish. Fish has been cured earlierly by smoking. Originally, smoking of fish was performed to preserve the fish. In modern times, fish is smoked for its distinctive taste and flavor imparted by the smoke. The common fish varieties that are smoked are salmon, mackerel, herring, whitefish and trout are the commonly smoked fish varieties. Hardwoods like oak, alder, hickory, birch, maple and fruitwoods are best for smoking fish. Cheese, which is specially treated by smoke curing called smoked cheese. As a result of smoke curing process, the original color of cheese changes to yellowish brown color. Any types of cheese such as mozzarella, cheddar and Swiss can be smoked. 
The type of wood alters the flavor of cheese. The most frequently used woods are fruit woods such as apple, cherry, pear and peach wood. Nut woods like almond, pecan can also be used to smoke cheese. Cold smoking of cheese is preferred because it is a must not to cook or melt the cheese. Smoking of cheese causes the milk fat to rise to the surface and form a preservative skin on the surface of cheese. Long term smoking imparts a darker color to the exterior surface of cheese. Eggs can also be smoked. Smoked eggs can be prepared either from hot boiled eggs or by smoking uncooked eggs in their shell. Pecan, cherry, oak woods are preferred for smoking of eggs. Cold smoking of eggs yield a soft product with an excellent smoky flavor and also maintain the integrity of the egg. Whereas hot smoking over cooks the product and yield a very rubbery and dry product. A wide range of smoked spices and herbs are also available in the market. For example, the chilli peppers have been dried and smoked over an oak fire then ground into a fine smoked paprika powder. These smoked chilli products add a powerful smoky aroma to the dish and yield a dark red colour. Smoking of vegetables such as onion, tomato, cabbage, corn is also common. During smoking of vegetables, they are sprinkled with salt and spices along with oil. They are further processed into soup and also can be added in other dishes. The smoky flavor adds an extra taste to the dish. Let me conclude the session by summarizing the points so far discussed. Smoking is an age-old process initially used for preserving meat. Many products such as meat, fish, cheese, vegetables are smoked. Cold smoking and hot smoking are the two major types of smoking methods. Liquid smoke is an alternative to cold smoking and hot smoking method which gives an immediate flavor to the product. Smoking increases the palatability of food by adding flavor and color to the product. I hope you understood about the smoking of foods and its effect on different food products. Meet you in your next lecture on prebiotics and probiotics. Thank you.